Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. I am so pleased that you have given me some of your time today. Um, Your time is costly, it's valuable and I want to honour it uh, and I want to serve you well. Uh, In this podcast we explore discipleship topics, we explore what does the scripture say about. Um, Ultimately we want to be apprentices in the way of Jesus and if we want to be apprenticed in the way of Jesus then we need to know what Jesus has to say. And the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6 and 7. Yeah, this is the uh, vineyard that we get to go plucking for the fruit, uh, you know, looking for his teaching. Uh, what does it look like uh, for the kingdom of God to be active in the world? What does Jesus have to say about uh, the world and the way we navigate it? What does Jesus have to say about the way God engages with his people? You know, we want to be apprentices of Jesus. Therefore, to know Jesus and know his teaching and know his way uh, is all that we can do, really. We, uh, we've just got to dive into what he has to say. And at the moment, we're going line by line through what's called the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is we get these strange ideas how the world works. And we get these ideas that if I'm more religious, uh, if I could just, if I was stronger at, if I knew more about, then I'll be. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is flipping all of this religiosity on its head. Uh, you know, it doesn't say, blessed are the religious, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, you know, no, he says, blessed are the down and outs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they will inherit the kingdom of God. You know, the people that don't have it, not the people that do have it. So Jesus is flipping the kingdom upside down. Uh, and that's why we're looking at the Beatitudes, to try and reframe how we see ourselves and see the kingdom of God. Um And it has day-to-day implications. You know, when you start to understand the kingdom of God and this upside-downness of Jesus' teaching, we start to realise it's not about the ones that have it, it's about the ones that don't have it. Uh, Not the ones who are doing well, it's the ones that are not doing well. Uh, Not the ones that have got more to give, it's those that have got less to give uh, that the kingdom is reaching for. And so we're going to be exploring today just the next of the Beatitudes, uh, Matthew 5, verse 6, where it talks about hungering, thirsting for righteousness. We're going to be just looking at that uh, together and asking the question, what does it look like for me? How, you know, where do I fit into this? So we'll be jumping into that in, in a second. Uh, I want to say a massive thank you to the listeners that have supported the podcast by buying me a coffee. Uh, there's a link in uh, the show notes in here where you can buy us a coffee. And there's a whole bunch of you uh, recently have done that and left us little messages, as supportive messages. Uh, I just want to say massive thank you to you guys. It's really encouraging. Uh, firstly, to know uh, that the podcast blesses you, that you're finding it helpful, it's encouraging you, uh, but also that you're willing to buy me a coffee. It's a, you know, in some ways, you are investing in me um, by doing that. You know, you you are not paying for this podcast you're investing in me and I've got my cup of coffee right here now there we go that one of you guys have bought you know and you know I sit here and I write my notes out and I take out my coffee uh, that that I've picked up and uh, I just sit and record these podcasts Uh, so you know thank you so much for just investing into our time by buying me a coffee it does make it feel like I'm not doing this on my own uh, but we're, we're kind of in this together so a massive thank you to those of you that have done that. Let's jump in then as we talk about hungering and thirsting. What does it mean to hunger and thirst for righteousness? What is Jesus actually talking about? Can I just remind you, um, the word blessed as we've looked at in the first episode of these, and if you're listening to these out of order, it might make more sense to go right from the beginning because Jesus is building something up. Uh, but anyway, welcome. Uh, but this word blessed uh, actually would be better translated at you're in the hands of God when. You're held by God when. Being blessed is not about having more. It's not about being successful. It's not about being healthy. Blessed is about the location that you're in. When you're falling apart and you put yourself in God's hands, you, you're kind of held in his hands, it's in that moment that you are blessed. 
uh, because of the position that you're in, not because of what you've got. So Jesus in Matthew 5, 6 says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You know, you're in the hands of God when you are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for they will be filled. Your stomach will be filled. Um, I love that Jesus talks about hungering and thirsting. It, it really makes it um, real for me. Uh, there's something about this inner hunger. You know, when you're starving and you're desperate for food, um, that feeling inside well Jesus is saying those of you that have got that stomach feeling of hunger you're thirsty and you're hungry and you're longing for righteousness then your stomach will be filled then your soul will be filled is what Jesus is is ultimately saying what a lovely line what a real rich normal human instinct hungering and thirsting you know, he could have not said hungering and thirsting. He could have just said, blessed are those that are longing for my righteousness, for they will be filled. Uh, you know, it would have worked, but he doesn't. He's hunger and thirst. You know, what's really interesting is you think about for a second, who is Jesus speaking to? Well, we know that Jesus is on the mount and he's teaching his disciples and he's teaching all these fans and followers that have been running around following him to a group of people who are living in uh, extreme poverty. Uh, here are a group of people that are struggling to make ends meet. They are living in a society where 65 to 70 percent of their income was taxed by the Roman Empire. If you could not pay your tax bill, then they would take it from you. I don't know if you've ever seen the film The Nativity. Uh, great film, but um, in it at the beginning, there's just this interesting moment where the Roman Empire turn up uh, into Nazareth and... Uh, Mary, Jesus's uh, Mary, uh, her dad, um, he has to pay this tax bill to to the Romans, and he he can't afford it. And the gentleman in front of him in the queue, he ends up having his daughter taken away from him because he couldn't afford to pay the bill. The daughter was taken into slavery uh, because dad could not f afford to pay this tax bill, uh, and and the girl is taken off. And then um, Mary's dad. Uh, it's about to happen the same and luckily he's got a donkey and he ends up uh, giving the donkey to the Romans uh, who who then kind of take it off to pay this debt, this tax debt that he's got. And um, it just shows that the Romans, you know, you, you paid your bill and if you couldn't afford to pay your bill, they would take uh, livestock or your daughter from you. Uh, that was the amount of poverty that they were living in. This was a group of people that really knew what it meant uh, to be hungry. Uh, a few years ago, I was in uh, Israel and I got to go to Herod's palace. This particular palace was called the Heronian. It's just outside of uh, Jerusalem and it's a man-made um, palace on a mount that he's built himself. And on top of it, he's got this military base. And in the military base, he's got his multi-story palace and he's got a swimming pool. Friends, that swimming pool was so big. Herod couldn't swim all the way across it, so he ended up having an island put in the middle of the swim pool uh, because he, he wanted to swim to the middle and, and get his breath. It was so big. Herod, uh, he wasn't a Jew. He was actually an Edenamite. He he actually came from the line of Esau, not the line of Jacob. Um, so he wasn't a real Jew. Uh, but, you know, the people like Herod, King Herod at that time, were so wealthy. They had so much wealth. And there was so much poverty sat side by side. And, you know, it's not to the Herods that, that Jesus said, blessed are those who have. You know, it's to those that don't have. It's to those that are being taxed. It's to those that their buckets have run dry. And he says to them, blessed are those that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. You know, the people that Jesus is speaking to uh, in, in this uh, sermon are the ones that are right at the bottom. They are the peasants. Uh, they are struggling to pay their taxes. They're struggling to feed their children. And into this, Jesus uses a metaphor and language that they understand. The raw substance of life. You know, your stomach is hungry. And it's into that place of hunger uh, that Jesus 
speaks and he's, he's using this raw analogy. You know what it means to be hungry in your stomach. Well, those that are hungry in their soul, those that are longing for righteousness, they will be filled. You know, Jesus does not say, blessed are those that have their religion wrapped up and it's all sorted. Jesus says those that know that it's falling apart. So, friends, we live in a world where we're actually more like Herod than we are like the peasants uh, that Jesus is speaking to. Most of us don't live in the poverty where we can't feed our families. With that said, I live in a neighbourhood where I know individuals that are not having their evening meal because they can't afford to feed their children. But that is not most of us. Uh, Most of us don't live in that place. Most of us are able to feed our children. Um, Most of us don't really know what it means to be really hungry. And we're actually more like Herod. We've just got so much that we don't know actually what we're really, really missing. So Jesus is teaching Sermon on the Mount and he's teaching to a group of people living in poverty and he uses an analogy that they understand that the hunger of your belly is the same hunger of your soul. And so here we have Jesus teaching and Jesus is essentially saying that God blesses those that are longing for God blesses those that are craving for. God blesses those that are aware that they have not got it sorted. uh, And they are the ones that are longing for his righteousness, longing for his presence, right? Uh, Longing for his holiness in their lives. Those that know they're hungry, know that their soul is crying out. They've lost it. They are the ones that God will bless. This is totally upside down. In a world where God blesses pastors uh, with the biggest YouTube channels, uh, in a world where God blesses leaders with gold watches and sports cars, God blesses church churches and church leaders. You know, we live in a world that we think blessing is scale and size. Uh, it's about what we have and what bling that we have, uh, how big our homes are. Jesus says into this, no, actually, God is God is the one who's blessing those that are at the bottom, not those that are at the top. God is not in the business of blessing those at the top, is into the ones who are blessed, blesses the ones at the bottom. So let me explore two things. I want to explore what does it mean to hunger, and I want to explore just righteousness. What is righteousness uh, for us? So what is hungering and thirsting? Friends, hungering and thirsting is the awareness of, Uh, that we lack something it's not something we possess it's something that we don't Uh, hungering and thirsting is about our souls crying out for more of God in us hungering and thirsting is about the frustration that we can't believe that we've done it again the frustration that we're back in that place the frustration that we've dropped the ball again it's this reality that we're back in this place of failure, that we don't have it all together, that we're barely making it through, that Jesus is saying, those of you like that, you're hungering and thirsting. And and in that place when you know that you failed, that you know that you don't have it, that's when God blesses you. So Jesus is announcing that it's not your ability, but it is your heartfelt, heartbroken failure where we are blessed. It's when we know that we have totally let ourselves down, others down and God down. When we're on our knees and we're saying, I have not got it. I can't do this. I am. I have failed. I am heartbroken uh, and I'm a failure. It's in that place that Jesus is announcing. Actually, that's a good spot to be. That's a great place to be because it's in this place that God can pick you up. It's in this place when you're on your knees that God can pick you up. So if the blessed were those that had achieved it, that's how the world would see it, uh, they became righteous uh, all on their own. So religious people, um, because they could achieve their religiosity, they could turn up and pray more, they could turn up and read scripture more, they could turn up and pay for their um, sacrifices, they could do all of that stuff. Um, we would often see those, as, well, they're the blessed, blessed, they've got it all together. Uh, well, actually, they're the ones that have got there on their own steam. 
they've got their under their own strength and power and Jesus recognizes actually that's not real righteousness that's self righteousness self righteousness and Jesus is not interested in our self righteousness is interested in the righteousness that comes from him see the self-righteous they earn it themselves the self-righteous can do it on their own and friends that is not the gospel that is not the gospel the gospel the good news is that when we haven't made it but you're still fighting for it you're still crying for it you're still hungering and thirsting for it it's in this moment that we are blessed when we don't have so blessed are you when you run out of willpower, no more ideas, you can't do it yourself, the bucket is empty, uh, you're aching for filling and longing for uh, what God has got. In that moment, you're crying out. In that moment where you've got nothing less and your hands are empty, it's in that moment Jesus says that you are blessed. Blessed are those who are hungering, thirsting and longing for righteousness, for they will be filled not those who've got it all sorted not the religious people that have done it under their own works no they're, they're the self-righteous they've got their by self jesus says no the righteous they're the ones who've realized they've not got it all together when you've run out of willpower you've run out of ideas you can't do it your bucket is empty you're aching internally for fulfillment and god's blessing and god's righteousness you're crying out to him in that moment you are blessed so being blessed happens when we have nowhere else to turn so you turn to God being blessed happens friends when you have nowhere else to turn and you turn to God I have a friend who uh well I've got a number of friends who are recovering addicts but this one particular friend who dips in and out of his recovery uh you know he does well for a couple of years and he relapses he does well for a couple of years and relapses and i I'd, I'd been with him when he was in one of his relapses and he was literally laid on the floor of his flat surrounded by uh, cans of cheap lager couldn't see his carpet there was that many cans he'd really gone deep and he's in his own vomit is in his own urine and he's laid on his floor of his living room with his head in his own vomit and luckily me and my friend um we got there could see him through the window uh, but actually when we got to his flat his, his flat it was on a yale lock and we prayed just before we went in and bizarrely the door was open his locked door was open um, it was a Yale lot that just kind of should shook behind him but it was open we walked in we found him there and he was literally with his face on the floor and he had hit rock bottom and he's sobbing still under alcohol but sobbing he did not want to be there he did not want to be in that place he was at rock bottom he had nowhere to turn he had nowhere to go and in that moment he had a decision it was literally die or Jesus uh, he he was destroying his body uh, he'd been vomiting blood and it was really bad and he had a decision is it death or is it Jesus and in that moment he he knew he had to turn to God he his his heart was now ready he'd hit a place of hungering and thirsting and he was desperate yeah we got him into 12-step program and we were able to get him into a recovery program but actually it was this moment of I need Jesus that changed everything. Friends, until this point when we hit rock bottom, we are able to turn to everything that we have to our disposal to keep on getting through. Until we've hit rock bottom, we will turn to our money, we will turn to our health, we will turn to our quick wit, uh, we'll turn to our ability to argue and argue ourselves out of a corner will turn to being able to send just one more email or one more letter or knock on one more door to get solution uh, while we've still got some energy to muster we will do it under our own steam we'll do it under what we have to our disposal but when we have run out when we've hit rock bottom and we've got nothing left 
that is the moment that Jesus is announcing, blessed are those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. That's the moment when you have got nothing left. That is the moment when you've run dry, when the answer to everything that you need is simply this, Jesus. Simply this, Jesus. So, hungry and thirsty. Let's talk about righteousness for a moment. When you think of righteousness, I wonder what comes to mind. Because I would often think of things like virtue or holiness or decency. Righteousness for me is somebody who is um, religiously sorted. Uh, they've got their virtue. They've got their holiness. They've got their decency. And friends, that is a total misunderstanding of righteousness. Uh, being righteous does not being right. It does not mean having it all. It does not mean being virtuous and having it. That is not what it means. So the Greek word here, which I'm about to utterly butcher, okay? The Greek word here is dikaiosun. And it translates as God's desire for wholeness, uh, completion, or shalom because desire for shalom and peace um it's it's a right place you're in a good place another way of translating it and this is one of my favorite ways of translating righteousness is this splitting it up to right justice uh being the in the place of right justice uh longing and thir you know thirsting for god's justice would be a a good way of saying it good justice in our lives um it's also translated as a proper relationship between God, his people, and, and creation. Uh, righteousness is when everything comes right under God's rule and God's reign. So righteousness is when everything comes together as it should be under God's rule and reign. It's a place where God's desire, his shalom and his peace have come together uh, in, in, in the right way, uh, where God's justice is involved with our lives. Uh, I love this idea of right justice, right justice. So righteousness is the desire uh, for things as they were intended to be for the universe brought into uh, it's the right place as it was always meant to be uh, so righteousness is about global issues as well as our is ourselves you know the word shalom in, in a similar similar way uh, the shalom of god the peace of god is about everything falling into its place same with righteousness righteousness is when everything of god falls into place and and it's coming together under god's governance that is righteousness so what about if we're not friends hungering and thirsting for god what if we are not hungering and thirsting for god because that is a problem you know herod had so much he did not need god sometimes friends we have so much under our disposal our money our health our quick wit our ability to argue the ability to send one more email one more letter one more phone call all of that can mean that we're still going under our own steam what if we are not hungering and thirsting for God? What about if we are actually quite happy with with how we are? What does that mean? I want to just say this. Maybe we have missed what Jesus can really offer us. If we are actually content, maybe we've missed what God can offer us. Maybe we need to be thirsting and longing for more. Maybe we need to have a desire for more. Desire for the more that God has for us. If you are not hungering and thirsting for this place where everything is right by God, in his peace, in his justice, in this internal place, not, not just global, but internal as well, this place where actually it's all coming together, if you're not longing for that, if you're not longing for that for the world, then maybe you've missed what Jesus can really offer us. Maybe we've missed what Jesus can really offer us. Maybe we need to be thirsting for more. Maybe you need challenging that there is more 
uh, with what Jesus has to offer in this upside down kingdom. He's got more for you. Maybe we're too content. Friends, for others, hungering and thirsting isn't about failure. It's possibly about being more in tune and with and aware of what is possible. So this hungering and thirsting might not be that your life has failed, but it may well be that you're in tune with God and you're aware that there's just more possible. There's more for you than what you have right now. It's possible that that more um, you understand the good gifts that God has for us, the more you realize that you're missing the mark, the more you realize God has more. Uh, you know, you don't have to get to a place where your bucket is totally empty to you know hit rock bottom and then turn to him. Friends, you can realize now before you get to that place that you are lacking, that you don't have all that what has God, God got for you. I love it in Ephesians, the God of immeasurably more. He's got immeasurably more than we can ask, dream, think and imagine. But yet we're content with the little that we've got. Maybe you need to hunger and thirst for more of what God has for us. Friends, Jesus isn't announcing anything for those who have faith all sewn up. They're already in the right place. They've got their faith sorted. Jesus is announcing that many of us uh, desire to be there, but we are not there yet. We are struggling. And in that struggle, in that longing, the kingdom is here. The upside down kingdom uh, is for us those that don't have it sorted, that, that don't have what it takes. Let me end by reading this to you. This is John 7, 37 to 38. On the last and greatest day of uh, the festival, this was the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood in a loud voice in the temple courts and said this, Let anybody who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, and as, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. Friends, it is when we are crying out to God, God, you have got more for me than what I have right now. Uh, you've got more for me to understand, more for me to consume, to drink, to take into my being. Um, those of us that are hungering and thirsting, longing to drink more of Jesus, drink more of his presence. Uh, those of us that believe, Jesus says these rivers of living water will flow up within us. Not those that have it sorted, but those of us that don't. This is the good news of the kingdom of God. That those of us that don't have it sorted, he will give us what we need to drink. So, what do we do with this? What we do with this, I, I want to just say, look, friends, get on your knees. Get desperate. If Jesus is saying the blessed ones are the ones who are hungering and thirsting, then let's get more hungry. Let's get more desperate. Let's get ready to say, Lord, I need more of what you have got, got for me. I'm not content where I am, Lord. I want the more that you have for me. Can you get into that place of crying out to God, becoming hungry, becoming thirsty, crying out to him? Because uh, it's in that place that we'll find that we are being filled, that God meets us in that place. So there you go, friends. Uh, blessed are those that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fed. They will be filled. Can you get hungry? Friends, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found that helpful. And I hope that you would find a place of desperation to receive more of what God has for you. And I pray that that may be a reality for you this week. Friends, until next time, grace and peace. Have a great week. And I love um, to know that you are going from this hungering and thirsting for more of what the Lord has for you. Amen.